Hi, in this video here today, what we're going to be talking about is the three different programs that Victron use. Their VRM platform, the Victron Connect portal, and the VE config. And I'm going to give you a basic rundown of what each program does. Now, before we get into the video, if this is something that you're really interested in, you really want to understand if you're going off grid or you've got a Victron ESS hybrid system and you want to understand how to program it. The amazing thing with Victron, if it's connected to the internet anywhere in the world, I can actually help you out. So if you're actually struggling and require help with this stuff here, you can go to our website, which I'll put the link in the description below. You can actually pick and book a time where actually I can jump on if you give us access to your system and I can remotely anywhere in the world help you program your system and get it fixed and work in the way you want it. If it's also something that you want to really learn and understand to do yourself and have a knowingness and a knowledge of how to do this stuff, there'll be a link in the description below to our Victron mini course, which runs through the in-depth detail of the Victron Connect VRM and the VE config files. We'll start with the Victron Connect program. The Victron Connect program is more designed to program MPPTs, some of the newer Victron ranges like the RS450s and Multis and things like that, or their newer products. The way I think about it, and this is not always a true case, but anything that connects by VE direct cable, which is a Victron specific cable, most of those products there is what you're gonna use Victron Connect to be able to program this stuff. And Victron Connect's probably the most common used app if you're someone that's a caravan, motorhome, four wheel drive, those sort of options. Victron Connect's probably mainly what you're gonna use. It's more designed for their DC products. We'll just jump into this one here quickly. So quick it loads up. As you can see, we've got a smart solar and a smart shunt. We go into here. Now it's loaded. As you can see here, you click in here. What the system's gonna do, if your system does require an update, it'll actually force you to do the update with a lot of the Victron Connect products. And then you can go in here when you can go and actually do and change all those settings and things like that. So this is more designed, like I said, for your battery monitors, your MPPTs. The way I think about it is most of the DC products are gonna be controlled through the Victron Connect app. Now let's talk about the VRM portal. So VRM stands for Victron Remote Monitoring. And this platform back in the early days, pretty much says all it did. You put your system online, you could actually log in and actually have a look and look at your system remotely. Now what it's allowed us to do is actually log in and program these systems anywhere in the world now. The way the Victron's designed their new products and systems is that from anywhere, as long as the system's on the internet, we can actually log in, update the firmware, make changes to the settings. Really good for hybrid customers who get the grid is available and you're using Victron ESS system. You can log in and use a lot of smarts. And same in an off-grid situation. Victron has some really cool functionality where like as a relay, as an example, if you're out and you want to manually control it, you've got a water pump, you want to irrigate your property, you can actually log into your Victron app, turn on a button, which is gonna turn your irrigation on. You can do all that from the Victron app, as long as the system's online, and you can turn it on and off with certain smarts and things like that. Now, I'll give you a basic rundown here. So your dashboard's really gonna see all your energy consumption and remember all your history. As you can see here, you can go yesterday, seven days, 30 days, and so on. System overview, you can have a look at your consumption if you really go into a deep dive and consumption here. As you can see, what the yellow on this here is yellow is basically solar of how much energy we actually used here in my home on solar. Eight kilowatt hours we've used from battery and from the grid five kilowatt hours. Now, if you haven't watched our other video on the Victron ESS and how my house works, you'll notice that actually that's not the grid that's popping up there. So check out this other video and you'll be able to see what I do in that there. Now let's jump into the advanced tab. So in here, this is where you get more your granular data. The Dashboard is more of an overview. This here, you can create different widgets. So up here, there's lots of different things you can actually have a look at and the information, the data that you can pull down and put on your advanced dashboard. So you got loads of options here. So this is your VA bus. So this is looking inside your inverter. So more you want to see your AC and DC inputs and outputs and things like that. Your battery monitor, so you can see all your low and high percentages, voltages, all that sort of stuff. So there's lots of different options here. We use tanks as an example. You could, in an off-grid situation, monitor how much water you've got in your storage tank. We mainly use these to see how much fuel's in the generator. So you've got lots of different options there. Once you pick your widgets, you can have them down here in your dashboard, you can see what's going on. Now with the device list, this is something that's really been a huge game changer with Victron and how they've made their new products and moved forward. This has been going on for quite a few years now, and they've really just got to a point where it's just really simple, really easy to do this stuff. This is here where you can actually go in, you can actually firmware update. So anything that requires a firmware, where back in the past before, I'd have to go to a Victron professional portal, find the right firmware, 
download it, make sure it matches, get a laptop, go out to site, plug it in, upload it, good to go. And these days with that remote access, it's made it so amazingly easy just literally to jump on here, check for firmware updates. And as you can see, there's a new firmware update from my inverter, which I'm not gonna do now, but you can actually update all your products from the VRM portal, which is great. I'd highly recommend that if you are gonna do these remote updates to have someone physically on site, just in case you need to turn something on and off. Now we'll go back over here to device list. And this is where you get access to the VE config file, which you require to use the VE configuration program, which we're going to do next. Now I've actually already pre-downloaded this. We'll just bring this up. Now this is from my place here and the VE config file. So this is allows you to actually change the hard settings, we'll call it with inside the inverter. So we'll just quickly flick through this. So as an example, I'm based here in Australia, we get all the different standards around the world, what you can actually set it for, all the different country codes. Now with the inverter, you can change the voltages. The way I like to do it is I like to match the grid voltages. If you're just off grid completely, just always leave it at 230 or if you're in the States, 110, whatever it comes as a default. There might be a situation off grid, you've got a really big, huge long run from where your battery system is over to your house. You might want to increase those voltages. That's going to help with the voltage drop from your shed over to your house if you've got a really long line. If you don't understand that, I'd highly recommend talk to a professional or check out the links in the descriptions below. And this is where you put your settings to turn your inverter on and off. Give you an example, the reason you use this, some batteries have a minimum voltage where the battery circuit breakers trip. So what you want to do, instead of your batteries tripping because they can't turn back on, you have your inverter turn off before it gets to that low point in your battery. So it just really depends on what battery and what system you've got. But a lot of these settings will actually come from the battery manufacturer or what they recommend to set the system up for. You can get your charging settings and all the settings and stuff like the charge, virtual switch, and ESS. Now, if you're someone that's off-grid and you've brought a MultiPlus, this ESC system is actually more designed for on-grid customers. This ESS system is more designed when the grid's available for the energy storage system, and it's actually not loaded on all the programs. So if you've got an older MultiPlus or maybe an older product that you wanna do that, just be wary depending about whereabouts in the world that you are, you might require to install extra hardware to make this work. But this is the program you use to upload this assistance. Now just show you something that my favorite thing to do with this program. I specialize in designing off-grid solar systems for people using Victron. And we've been using Victron products for over a decade now. One of my favorite things to add is a PV inverter support. So this is what allows you to actually take a grid connected inverter and it doesn't work with all grid connected inverters, but you can take a grid connected inverter and use it off-grid. In an off-grid environment, we call it a PV inverter. Boom, PV inverter support. That's just the things of some examples of things that you can add. Other things as well in here with assistance, you get access to relays. So you can actually turn things on and off when batteries get full or you want to turn irrigation on. Victron has a lot of smarts built into these products from the factory. That's just a basic overview of the three most common used Victron programs. There is another program called Victron VE Bus Configuration. That's more when you're adding multiple inverters together, doing three phase systems and things like that. If you really wanna get a knowing to this stuff and really understand it, in the link to the description below, there's a link to our Victron mini course and how to program this stuff. The Victron mini course is designed to give you a knowingness and understanding of how to use the Victron VRM portal, how to use Victron Connect, and how to use the VE configure file just for off-grid systems. If you're looking to understand more the VE bus and design bigger systems where you're using multiple inverters and things like that, that's in our more advanced course. If you're just someone that's going off-grid, look to program your off-grid system or your hybrid system to the grid, the Victron mini course will give you every everything you're required to know to basically set your Victron system up for success. So to find out more about the mini course, click in the link in the description below. And you've learned something or got something out of this video and found it useful, I'd love to hear in the comments below or give us a like to say thank you. Until next time, whether it's you or your batteries, stay energized.